Organisations of the 21st century are able to take many different forms and very significantly in managerial structures, which is mainly attributable to technology and the global economy. Where authority lies within an organisation and how decisions are made are issues all firms must address. The response will ultimately determine the roles for managers and employees, communication processes, incentives and in some cases the level of innovation. I'm Eleanor Powell and today two businesses will be analysed in terms of their compositions, levels of authority, accessibility of information internally and their decision making processes. Sahil Lavinia, a young entrepreneur, founded Gumroad in 2012 and established the organisation as a platform for people to buy and sell their electronic creative works. The operations of Gumroad will be compared to that of Microsoft, an extremely successful and established technology giant offering varying software and hardware products and services. Whether a business's processes are centralised or decentralised is dependent upon the decision making, authority and levels of hierarchy constructed. A highly centralised system denotes that formal authority lies at the top of the organisation, usually with a CEO alongside a small group of higher managers. Within a predominantly centralised organisation, a manager can enforce a decision or insist a project upon an employee that the employee may dislike. Contrasting to this authoritative position is a decentralised organisation where workers who are the most capable of making a decision are empowered to do so. In some conditions, this is highly effective, such as in competitive environments and growing organisations where employee interests are aligned to that of the organisation. Decentralisation is only beneficial under certain circumstances and can be potentially damaging to some organisations. Asymmetric information in organisations is sometimes unavoidable, and when organisations choose to centralise the decision away from the most qualified participant, the decision to centralise becomes costly and can result in less than optimal outcomes. To balance or account for this lack of internal motivation, many companies implement incentive programs to motivate employees to achieve the organisation's desired results. In reference to innovation, it was found that incentives in many centralised economies and companies were insufficient to compel decision makers to elect riskier options. This is where decentralised systems are advantageous. Innovation is embraced if the benefits exceed the costs and any organisation that implement a flat decision making structure have projects with potentially large upsides and relatively small downsides. In the last few decades, the technology industry has been completely transformed by the likes of companies such as Apple, Google, Sony and Microsoft. Microsoft has been one of the key players in this revolution. More currently, small startup tech firms are also delivering large scale results, such as Gumroad, a startup in Silicon Valley. It has been established in the previous theory that mature, large businesses need rigorous internal structuring that is keenly monitored. The organisational structure at Microsoft is comparable to this traditional structure in some ways and differs in others. This conventional configuration differs to companies that adopt a flat structure which is generally more suitable to technology startups where employees often thrive in such an environment. The organisational structure of Gumroad is completely flat. Employees are empowered to make their own decisions to shape and grow the company. This decision making style is made possible because of the purposeful hiring of highly educated and capable employees and effective because of the early stage in the company's life. Another completely differentiated aspect of Gumroad is their platform for information sharing. Everyone in the company uses open, public forums of communication. Essentially, the company is constantly building a complete internal record that is fully integrated and accessible to all staff. This approach allows for completely transparent exchanges and in turn eliminates the issue of asymmetric information. Through this decentralised management style, majority of process and bureaucracy is decreased and in some situations completely eliminated. However, through this decentralised method, a lot of individual accountability is evaded. Further, because no one has a direct manager to report to, individual feedback is in many cases just not possible. This lack of direction and feedback may limit the company in reference to hiring, as new or experienced employees cannot be hired. 
as the company does not have the structure or the resources to guide them. The organisational structure of Microsoft is both divisional and centralised, meaning each subdivision operates separately to one another, and then all of these managers report to a central authority. This choice of structure has led to many self-destructive decisions, namely incentive systems causing damaging internal politics and conflicting projects or results. Through many accounts of current and former employees, the stack ranking system, customary within the company, seems to have had the most consequences on internal operations and incentivised employees to compete with and degrade one another. The results of this system led to employees focusing on internal rivalry rather than concentrating on external competition and compelled champions within each division not to work together on projects through the concern that their rankings would be negatively affected. As previously discussed, there is an increased chance in centralised organisations to make type 2 errors in relation to new projects. Partly because of Microsoft's multi-layered hierarchy, there have been many instances of this type of type 2 errors being made, such as the project of a tablet in 1998, comparable to that of the now hugely successful iPad, being created and subsequently shut down due to lack of expected success. The potential profits that were foregone from projects such as this are immeasurable, as is the huge enhancement of the Microsoft brand had they been successful. It is evident that Microsoft and Gumroad widely differ in their organisational hierarchy and approach to decision making. The approach taken by Gumroad is an extremely decentralised structure with a flat decision making process. Whereas on the other hand, Microsoft is a mature company implementing a centralised structure with many layers of hierarchy and authoritative decision making process. Because of the advanced stage of the business, it is assumed that a centralised structure would be beneficial for Microsoft. However, it is apparent that the company's incentive programs are not balancing the negatives that result from centralised organisational structures. Gumroad is a young firm in a growth phase, so the expected payoff of a successful project is larger and the downsides associated with failed projects are low. However, Gumroad develops as Gumroad develops, a higher risk will similarly come with the progression of all suggested projects. To address this issue, it is suggested that a project assessment system is implemented where employees or project managers must seek transitional approval to assess the likely success of a project before advancing it. To address the issue at Gumroad of limited accountability and feedback to employees, it is suggested that all project groups should set debrief meetings through set periods of a project and following the project. Through this, employees will be able to assess what went well, what did not go well, and how each one could change this for the future. To target the lack of divisional coordination at Microsoft, it is suggested that middle and upper managers from each division meet on a regular basis to improve communication and in turn speeding up meaningless processes. The involvement of middle and upper managers in these divisions will also increase internal motivation, creating a better chance of succeeding both the targets and harmony across units. It could be deducted that the previous potentially successful projects that were shut down in Microsoft, resulting in a Type 2 error, are partly attributable to the asymmetric information between divisions. This issue could be improved through the implementation of a platform similar to that already in operation at Gumroad a forum for communication by topic or project. It is additionally proposed that the company appoint a diverse board of three to four people to be in charge of voting whether or not projects are approved. Though expensive, this recommendation may assist in some potentially successful projects being approved instead of rejected because they do not align with Microsoft's previous success such as Microsoft Office. Lastly, the stack ranking system at Microsoft must be revised. The measurable effects stemming from the system are huge and could largely be decreased if the system was altered. The way in which teams must allocate a set amount of great, good and bad staff is ineffective and therefore this aspect should be removed. It is advocated that a more qualitative approach be taken. Rather than rating with figures, employees provide positive and negative feedback so each individual can improve. The results of this should improve innovation and internal conflict within Microsoft. Thank you.